no matter where, what stage you're in, if you own a property or you manage your property, put it in the database because when they reach out to you, they'll ask you if the property is available. So the best thing you want to do, even if you're not ready, even if a property is being renovated, even if a property is, is about to be ready to be furnished, put your property in the respective databases. This is critical because as you can see now, it doesn't even matter if it's not furnished. And that's probably because there's a lack of inventory. But at the same time, there's a little bit deeper than that. Who's this? Oh, you're an entrepreneur? Oh, you're a real estate investor. Oh, you're trying to learn from those who did it. Well, come into the lab then. Put your white coat on, gloves on, notepad and let's build y'all experiment nation the midterm rental insurance space has just gotten a step easier and i'll tell you why there is breaking news going around and i do want to give a little bit of context and while people that i know in within the circle some people in the midterm rental insurance space uh, are freaking out. I see opportunity in disorder, but it's really not disorder. It's actually, if you look at it from an abundant state of mind, I don't see how this is actually a issue. This is actually an opportunity. The only way I could see it as an issue is, well, I will reveal that in a second, but before I do, I first want to level set and, um, Talk about how good of a week this was. And I want to give flowers to those who deserve flowers. Uh, so one, I wanted to give a shout out to um, one of my dear friends. And, uh, you know, I look at him as a leader in our space. Uh, that's really changed the game, not only for, um, you know, us, but many others in the community. And that's my buddy, Michael Shogren, who uh, had the pleasure of, uh, connecting with him over the weekend along some of my other peers another shout out to mike riley uh for putting the event together and spearheading that but you know i was with the short-term rental secrets mastermind group their seven-figure boardroom i spoke there on the opportunity that exists into midterm rentals and harnessing the power of it and it was just uh an amazing moment to see the light bulb goes off going off of um He's an operators, right? This is a group of, uh, you know, made up of short-term rental operators, seven-figure level um, hoteliers, right? And I was able to share some insights from what I see are opportunities on both ends, whether you're in short-term rentals, whether you're in um, hotels. There is, you know, I think a perfect example of what we talked about during the mastermind is the extended stay model that uh, extended stay hotels adopted through acquisitions and was later then acquired by Blackstone. So if you've ever heard such a name of Blackstone, those that's one of the biggest um, private equity firms uh, in real estate. And when they go big, uh, which they always do. Uh, it's such a proof of concept uh, to follow that, you know, anytime Blackstone is making a movement, uh, it's it's big money and there's and they, they follow trends and they're early. And so it means you're in a good place. With that said, we do want to transition into some, I make this episode specifically about the breaking news that has kind of gone around. And I will try to give a little bit of context for those who are not familiar with what that might be. This might be your first episode, uh, whether you know it or not. Um, for if, you're, if it's your first time listening or you're just tuning into the space of uh, midterm rentals, um, it's really important for you to understand the opportunity that exists um, in this space. And the way it works essentially is uh, in an area that we've really doubled down in is the area of working directly uh, with insurance companies who are looking to displace policy um, families who are uh, policy holders. So what that means is when a disaster happens, uh, such as a family needs to 
um, has a kind of unforeseen event where they can't live in a home, uh, such as a pipe bursting, water damage, etc., they'll lean on their insurance company to house them. Um, now, the insurance company, like a state farm or farmers or all state, is not going to be the one to house them. What they're going to do is they're going to be relocated. And um, the way they're relocated is all state, state farm, all of the above, any insurance company typically is working with a temporary housing providing agency provider that will then relocate the family, find them uh, uh, available properties, whether it's in their database or whether it's on Furnish Finder, whether it's on Airbnb, whether it's on, um, you know, one of their existing da databases, Zillow Rental Manager, there's tons out there. They will do the heavy lifting for the insurance company. And the insurance company has uh, what we call an additional living expense or loss of use or coverage D that the homeowner, again, this is not for investing properties. These are for primary homeowners who live in the home, who have what we call loss of use available for them to use. Uh, for them to relocate temporarily. And that loss of use is usually a premium um, because there's an opportunity here to, uh, to truly um, maximize, um, or at least you pay your mortgage every single month so that when something does come up, there's a pool of money for you to access and be eligible for. So in short, and you've probably heard me say this over and over again. So what we do as homeowners is we uh, invest into um, these single family homes uh, primarily because we're solving a big problem uh typically like four to five bedroom homes fence and backyard master on main just you know avoid carpets etc make it super pet friendly so that now you have an opportunity to serve uh, these families right and uh once you're serving a, a providing a furnished accommodation the insurance company is going to be able to pay a premium right so there's multiple episodes on this videos i have on youtube if you have not familiar with the model uh, make sure you tune into uh, the Real Estate Experiment uh, YouTube channel because there's a lot of content on there about this topic, a lot of free content of, you know, how you can position yourself as a homeowner to get in front of these opportunities. But here's where things kind of got shaken this week, where typically the opportunity for those who understand it is for you to have a furnished accommodation because you can charge a premium um, when a family is looking to relocate, right? Um, what this means now is... Uh, uh, I'll give you an example. So there are multiple temporary housing providers in the nation, such as, um, you know, the ones that work directly with insurance companies. Right. And one of the biggest, largest ones that a lot of these insurance companies work with, like I was on the phone with USA the other day and they would say, yep, we have a partnership with these guys. It's Ailey Solutions. And you can go to AileySolutions.com. And one of the things that we always tell our uh, opera, uh, one of the things that we, we tell our uh, our our listeners or our students or mastermind students, et cetera, is to uh, you want to make sure that you your properties are, are going to be uh, available uh, in their database because that's how they find you. Now, with the recent breaking news, and I have it here straight from the horse's mouth because we do have internal connections, they did confirm that they are pushing forward with unfurnished properties as well, which to me... Uh, what that means is they're not longer, it's no longer just furnished accommodation they're looking for. Um, they're also going to explore unfurnished options, which for me means that opens up the door now for not just the short term rental operators, right? Because I always said that the short term rental operators uh, have an advantage of tapping into this midterm rental opportunity um, because, quite frankly, um, you know. You, as a short-term rental operator, operator, already have furniture in place, Wi-Fi set up, smart locks, all that, that you're really just a few tweaks away from landing these midterm rental insurance contracts. Well, now it opens up the door for even those who have unfurnished accommodations, uh, which is very interesting. And I think there's a big opportunity to continue to capitalize on this opportunity uh, of having your... Uh, you know, your, what your furnished um, accommodations in the database. And now also your, un, your unfurnished uh, accommodations, which is essentially your properties into the database as well. So Experiment Nation, you've heard the word MTR, midterm rentals, as it is currently a hot topic and hot commodity right now, because 
Again, there has been an increase in short-term rental regulations, and there also has been, let's face it, a slowdown in what we were experiencing a couple years back when it comes to bookings. So with that said, short-term rental operators are looking for alternative solutions to tap into the midterm rental space. However, there is a space, there is a sub niche of midterm rental insurance that I'm truly excited about that I want to share with you that the experience that we've had, the tremendous results we've been able to have, and that's the insurance midterm rental space, which is very different than your traditional midterm rentals. Or when you think of traditionally midterm rentals, you think of travel nurses. There is a space midterm rental insurance space that we've tapped in where you need to be well connected with insurance and relocation specialists and companies and understand the right type of asset required for you to be able to help these families what's really important that stands out the most which you can get in what i'm about to offer you is the understanding where to be found by these insurance companies how to properly manage your calendar so that your listings are optimized so that they can find you how to actually gain traction and build a relationship with these relocation insurance companies i've put together an mtr insurance blueprint that's double m t triple r insurance blueprint to cover these foundations after we've had success landing very large contracts on single family homes that literally 4x what we traditionally make in long-term rentals and also gives us peace of mind because there's less turnover and a hundred percent occupancy because these contracts can start anywhere from 30 days to three months to eight months and range anywhere from again we've landed anywhere from eight thousand to nine thousand dollars a month in per month on a single family home property which our mortgages are typically around a 2400 range which then gives you a large spread of anywhere from four to six k net on just one property and this is why it's very hot right now but people who haven't been in the lab with individuals like myself like jesse vasquez and dr rachel gainsborough and noble crawford don't have the foundations and don't know exactly where to start and therefore this is why i'm giving you guys a blueprint the mtrr insurance blueprint go to the website experimentrealestate.com and get yourself a blueprint to completely change or at least have a plan b if you're a short-term rental operator looking to maximize your occupancy and profitability we'll see you on the other side i would highly recommend that if you're listening to this and you also have properties where you're like oh i don't want to enter it in a database that first of all i always say no matter where, what stage you're in, if you own a property or you manage your property, put it in the database because when they reach out to you, they'll ask you if the property is available. So the best thing you want to do, even if you're not ready, even if a property is being renovated, even if a property is, is about to be ready to be furnished, put your property in the respective databases. This is critical because as you can see now, it doesn't even matter if it's not furnished. And that's probably because there's a lack of inventory. But at the same time, there's a little bit deeper than that. And the reason why I'm on this podcast, I want to share with you the reason why it's going a little bit deeper is because um, or or why they've gone that direction. This to me seems like a very corporate decision that was made, right? A corporate decision to, um, when I say corporate, this means from the higher up where they look at their dollars, their top line and bottom line, right? Here's how it works. And I had to ask internally some of my peers in the space on what's really going on. And I've had this conversation with the relocation specialists themselves, right? So number one is it's actually to their advantage to have properties that are not furnished uh, because they can now go to their preferred uh, uh, furnished uh, vendors and pay and have the property um, furnished, but at the same time get some sort of a kickback. So they have a partnership with these companies and the more that they do business with them, the more their cost of furnishing goes down. So they're playing the long-term game because now if they start furnishing more properties, their cost of furnishing goes down. And from what I understand, there's some kind of kickback or some kind of incentive that comes back to them, whether it's for the you know lesser cost for them in the future, or them getting some kind of kickback for doing so. Um, either way, it's more money in their pocket because remember what you have to keep in mind is 
the insurance company is paying for Ailey Solutions to find a temporary housing relocation. Ailey Solutions is making their money on the markup, right? If they're making the money on the markup, now being able to find a furnished vendor is another way for them to even monetize more of their markup right because they're again this is a hundred million dollar plus company like these guys have found a very good way to become the go-to provider and uh by by partnering with these um by partnering with these insurance companies right so um it's genius right but you need to keep in mind what does that mean for us right operators well, there's two things that I get from this. One, it serves us to have our furnished accommodation still in their database. And two, it serves us to um, have furnished uh, or non-furnished portfolios or properties that we manage in their database as well. Because when they do reach out, it means it's actually one less cost for us, right? Especially if the property is unfurnished. I know it costs us a good, a pretty penny to furnish properties on our own dime. Now, if it means that Ailey Solutions will take properties that are not furnished, well, that's another bonus and, on a, and, and no, another low-hanging fruit opportunity that exists. And I'm not sure why most people are not seeing it that way, um, but that's the way I see it. It's like they need more inventory, and so they're rolling out, they're rolling this out. Now, it doesn't mean that they're going to eliminate those who are furnished, right? Now, while I'm sure that's the goal to at least have more that are unfurnished, that's where I genuinely think that we need to be very strategic in what that might look like, right? What networks can we tap into? Uh, I know it's it can be very challenging to to work with landlords who are not educated on this model. So it might mean that we need to increase our education for these. Uh, maybe you're in arbitrage and you're like, great. Now you're going to arbitrage homeowner's property once you get a contract in hand because you don't even have to worry about the furnishing. I think there's endless possibilities from uh, from a play perspective that you can take action on, right? Uh, one of the things that I think you can do as an operator is uh, submit your properties as both furnished and unfurnished, two options. You guys know I love to duplicate my listings. This is another thing, way to duplicate your submissions. Uh, uh, take note of that, right? Uh, I think there's an opportunity to, uh, if you have access to the MLS, I think there's a huge opportunity there to then start really getting ahead of it of all these uh, homeowners who have properties that are, are are for rent that haven't been rented, right? Or you might be the gateway, right? So I think I always like to think of what are the solutions that are going to happen? Now, it's all, not all rainbows, right? Uh, what I've heard is, you know, there's there's a good chance that we'll I haven't experienced an unfurnished contract with Ailey Solutions yet, but there's a good good ch chance that um, there's there's a there's a really good chance that um, there, there's a good chance it's going to be a bit less, right? I haven't seen the numbers. I can't speak on something I haven't seen. But the contracts might be less, right? Uh, by how much I don't know, right? Some are have argued that being a preferred vendor is is, is uh, brings in less revenue as well, less traffic as well, not as much as incentive for the relocation spe specialist to be to to recommend you. So there's a lot of work to be done still. But I share this information so that you can kind of decide how you want to pivot, right? How you want to uh, position yourself. In, in, in front of the opportunity. That is the way entrepreneurs solve problems and get on top of opportunities and get ahead of them. And that's why I wanted to get this information out to you because Ailey Solutions is the number one uh, temporary uh, relocation uh, agency that then does connect to homeowners and operators like ourselves. So it's in our it's in our best interest and in, in our duty to um, to make sure we get in our way of where the, the the flow is coming from, right? And so that's going to be very important for, for us to start thinking of these strategies. And right now it's very early. We don't have as much data, but that's actually when the opportunities are. You want to be early to the party, not late. Uh, you want to see around the corner. So I wanted to plant that seed. There'll be plenty more insights uh, for those of you who are listening to this. Depending on when you listen to this, I'm doing uh, my midterm mental 
boot camps. And when you speak of marketing, there's plenty of strategies that'll be rolling out there. Um, that is a paid boot camp, but I do have a special link for those who are listening. We do have one if you're listening to this um, every month. And we also do have free webinars, uh, where I would highly recommend you joining to, to kind of hearing the latest, uh, greatest information. One thing I'm really proud of is that we're doing this boots on the ground ourselves. We're speaking to the insider location, the insider connections there. Uh, we have reps that we speak to every day. We have active contracts with them. So this is kind of a, a constant uh, a thing uh, that we're working on with uh, them. And so it's it serves you to stay close. Uh, look out uh, if you haven't gotten the MTR Insurance Blueprint. Uh, that's one way to get on my list because I constantly email out progress, breaking news, etc. So with that said, I um, wanted to at least get the word out. And you can start thinking about how that might make sense in your business, whether it's that homeowner that told you they're looking to rent and you want to kind of uh, revive that conversation uh, or submit their property on, on, on their behalf. Or maybe you have a portfolio of existing properties that are unfurnished that you were unsure about. There's an opportunity there uh, to, to definitely lean in to to the direction they're trying to go into. Now, the same rules apply just because it's unfurnished doesn't mean that you're going to get a bunch of leads coming your way if you're not properly optimized. So that's why if that's something you haven't done, uh, listen to, uh, look at some of the content that I have online around that, of how you should be ahead of it. Um, there's tons out there or join one of the boot camps. So I think that can help someone who's listening uh, who wants to make that leap, especially if you're coming from the SDR world. Um, now we'll throw in the LTR world, long-term rental, and you you want, uh, and maybe your, your home's not furnished yet. There's an opportunity for you as well. So where do I need to list my properties? How do I list them? How many times I submit it? Where do I need to go, et cetera? Huge opportunity there. Want to at least plant the seed and your job is to water that seed so that I can turn it to a plant, to a tree, and ideally a huge opportunity, possibly a money tree in your respective lab, right? So uh, take the seed and it is on you to water it, but there'll be plenty of opportunities to show you how we're watering our plants uh, so that we can continue to, to uh, be of service in this uh, very niched uh, space. So with that said, Thank you so much, Experimentation. Make sure if you're listening, if this is your first time, um, go and grab the MTR Insurance Blueprint on our website uh, and stay tuned with the latest updates. I do, at the time of this recording, we'll be meeting with someone internally and find out more details around this. So you make sure you want to stay tuned, stay ahead of it, and continue to experiment. You're only one experiment away. Let's build. Experiment Nation podcasting has changed the way we operate as real estate investors ourselves, and it can do the same for you. Podcasting has been the source of the master classes that we get thanks to the world class real estate investors and practitioners and specialists that come into the lab from all realms, from short term rentals to mid term rentals to real estate syndications to even software as a service owners, founders, entrepreneurs have helped enrich our experiments by giving us the education, helping us build a network, and lastly, and most importantly, a brand association to open up multiple doors for our respective businesses. If you understand the power that podcasting can have, and you know that you need one for your brand, please, you can rely on our team. InvestedTalent.com is my team and the team that helps this podcast, The Real Estate Experiment, become the fruition each and every single week to educate my community, build relationships on the air, and continue to build our brand. If you know that you need to do the same for your brand and you haven't pulled the trigger yet, maybe because you don't know how, our company, InvestedTalent.com, does the end-to-end -end from the time that you record to the time that it is published to even repurposing content on multiple social media platforms. That's what my team can do for you. Simply go to InvestedTalent.com and book a discovery call to see how my team can help you launch your podcast.